فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحوم كالطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير Do you know that in Surah An-Nur, what is the message? Have we ever picked it up and read it? It's all to do with morality. It is all to do with remaining steadfast and abstaining from immorality. Sexual misbehavior, people need to abstain from that. This is what is in Surah An-Nur. Some of the scholars have said, those who can lower their gaze for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be granted the nur in the dunya and the akhirah. This is in Surah An-Nur. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who can turn to him at all times. So Allah commences with the verses about zina and how the punishment should be carried out against those who commit zina. Now before we go into the punishment of zina, there are two punishments. One is the stoning to death of a, one, a person who, ha, who has been married in the past or is correctly married and they commit zina. The Sharia says such a person should be stoned to death. That is there. There is no doubt, no debate. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum have confirmed it. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu has spoken about it. Nowadays you have people who say, you know what, that's not in the Quran. That's not Islam. Why do you want to justify things when you know that the, the, the Sharia has no loopholes? Ask those who can explain it to you. Look, these punishments of zina are deterrence more than punishments. It is virtually impossible to have Four complete eyewitnesses who read Salah five times a day who are brilliant Muslims to come and bear witness and describe to the Qadi in an Islamic court telling him exactly what they saw describing the act of intercourse. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Imagine you have guys with big, big beards, for example, and people who are five times Salah in the first saf. Now they see two people kissing. They'll probably look the other side, but I got nothing to do with this. Do you think, does it make sense that this person will then have a peep, watch, phone his buddies who he knows are on a similar spiritual level and say, you know what you guys, we need three of you to come here and witness this. We got to go to the Qadi there and to the court. No, it's a deterrent. Never in Islamic history has anyone been stoned to death except through confession. I hope you understand that. Never in Islamic history has anyone been stoned to death except through confession unless there was something wrong with this justice system. Because this is a deterrent. It is impossible to get four eyewitnesses who are brilliant Muslims, who don't have a blemish against them. Do you know if you can prove that that man has missed a salah, his witness will not be accepted. Allahu Akbar. That's impossible. You can't get that. So let us understand it is a deterrent. It is telling us that we definitely need to abstain from this sin because it is a huge crime. At the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yes, there was a woman who was stoned. But that was from confession. She confessed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned away from her, told her to go away. Maybe you didn't do this and so on. And after a long time, she kept on saying, I need to be cleansed. Some Sahaba even said, why are you coming out and saying this when Allah has protected you? The sin was committed in secret. Now, when people begin to open, openly commit sin in front of people, that is when this will come into place. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us all protection, ourselves and our children from this, from this serious crime of zina. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commences with it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about something worse than zina. What is worse than zina? Those who accuse others of zina. That is worse than zina itself. To accuse someone of committing an act or to accuse someone of adultery is worse than the act itself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And Allah says, such a person, we, we must never ever accept their witness. Those who accuse others of zina, those who accuse the believing women of zina. You know, nowadays, when we watch a man and a woman talking and people come about and they say, you know, those two are having an affair. Do you know how serious that statement is? Wallahi, if it was in the form of ink and it was to be put in the oceans, it would change the color of the Atlantic Ocean. That is how devastating that statement is. Those two are having an affair. What affair are you talking about? Are you ready to stand in front of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal and utter the statement again? Allahu Akbar. Better mind our, our tongues, inshallah. We'd rather abstain, keep quiet. What is meant by that? Today when someone says those two are having an affair, they are accusing them of zina. May Allah protect us all. So that is why we rather make dua for them. 
And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. The fact that in Surah An-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the punishment of those who have committed adultery. There are several clarifications that I'd like to make. The first is that in a country where the Islamic law is not being implemented and where there is no Sharia court, it is not up to the general public of the Muslims to execute those, the, the penal code that is set in the Quran. So let's get this straight. Only where the Sharia is being implemented and there is a court that adopts the Sharia and implements it, those are the only places where this punishment shall be executed. Otherwise, it is not up to me and you to decide, right, someone has committed this crime, let's pick them up and start whipping them. Na'udhu Billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding. In environments such as the one we are living in, we will engage in tawbah inshallah and we will encourage others to engage in tawbah and we will try our best to communicate the good word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that people can turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their hearts and may Allah use us inshallah to deliver the message and may he make us from amongst those who can adopt it ourselves as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the lashing. I mentioned yesterday the stoning. Today I'd like to mention the lashing 80 lashes or up to 100 lashes of those, in fact, 100 lashes, the adulterer or adulteress, those who have committed adultery and they have not been married in the past or they are not married a correct nikah at the moment as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of that. And as I said, and I'm repeating it again today, the, the punishment regarding those who've committed adultery in the Sharia, yes, it is a punishment. Whether it is the stoning to death of those who have been married or are married, or whether it is the whipping and lashing of those who have not been married. We must not deny that it is the penal code, but more than a punishment, we should all know that it is a deterrent. And I explained that yesterday. It is more a deterrent than anything else because it is absolutely impossible to have four solid Muslims of a sound background without a blemish on their record to come and witness one person committing zina. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that understanding. Up to now, the media makes a big noise about people who might be stoned here or there. The day they are stoned, we will tackle the issue. Up to today, none of them have been stoned. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand that the media has its game and it is playing it very well. But with ourselves, we do not authenticate before we believe it. So we fall into the trap of the media as Muslims ourselves. We tend to start feeling that the Sharia is barbaric. By doing that, we lose our own Iman. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us all slaves of the media. We should not believe stories. When people utter, we should learn how they utter, what they utter, why they utter, and we shouldn't fall into their traps. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Then in the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of a verse that is mistranslated in many of the English translation Qur'ans that we have. There is a verse where Allah speaks about the man and the woman who've committed adultery. And Allah says, now, what some people translate this verse as, they say, and I'm sure we might have heard it, they say that a person who's committed adultery will not marry anyone but a lady who's committed adultery. And a lady who's committed adultery will not marry anyone but a man who's committed adultery. That translation is incorrect. It's wrong. The word nikah in the Sharia does not only mean the marriage that we engage in. No, it also means the act of intercourse. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is saying that an adulterer does not commit adultery with anyone but an adulteress because if she was not an adulteress, it would have been rape and not adultery. I hope we've understood that. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done is he is equating the two in the crime. Why in the previous verse he said lash both of them, not only the male, not only the female, lash both of them because they were both equal parties in fulfilling that crime. That is why Allah says a person who is a male committing adultery is only committing adultery with a woman who's an adulteress. They are both equal. And if a woman is an adulteress, then the man committing the act with her is also an adulterer. They are both equal. So that means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us that look, a person committing adultery cannot say I committed adultery with someone who did not want to commit it because then it would be rape. And that punishment is far worse. 
But when it is adultery, both of them are equal parties. That is the meaning of the verse. In fact, some of the Sahaba have gone as far as translating it slightly differently also. And they've said, Az-zani la yambaghi lahu an yankiha illa zaniyatan aw mushrika. That a person who's committed adultery, it is not befitting for that person to then get married to a virgin. It is not befitting for that person. But it does not mean in any ways that a person who's committed adultery will never ever marry a virgin. That is a, an incorrect translation. We might have heard it. It's a point of clarification that I've made here tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding.